Let us pray together the collect for this Sunday. Let us pray. Give us grace, O Lord, to answer readily the call of our Savior Jesus Christ and proclaim to all people the good news of his salvation, that we and the whole world may proceed with glory of his marvelous works, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And you may be seated. scriptures today are a call to action from Jesus, action informed by our loving relationship with God, with the Lord, and with one another. It is a call to open our eyes to see both the needs around us and God's hand at work in the world, and then to see where we can help. Seeing requires light, a flashlight at night, a reading lamp so as to see your book, a huge set of lights to see the game down at the stadium. We're also called to be bringers of light, to shine that special light of Christ in the world, light. Now, I am night blind. And good light has always been important for me. Now, today I don't drive at night. I don't drive much in the daytime either. But when I worked in Bermuda, I did drive at night. And compensated by keeping track of the way with the help of the lights on the back of the car in front of me. And the speed limit there, by the way, is only 20 miles an hour, so not a whole lot can go wrong. As long as the driver kept going my way, I was okay. Well, there was one stretch of road on the way to my house where there were no houses and no street lights. And I rem remember a night, just as I got to that point, the car in front of me turned off. And I was in darkness. And I had to switch on the high beams. But you know, they're the irritation of anybody else in coming the other way. And the burst of light let me see all I needed to see to get home. And fortunately, there was no one on the other side of the road. Light. With good light, I can read fine print. With poor light, even the large letters are a challenge. For us, God's light is there. And it lets us see the way forward. It lets us see the path through the maze of life. It lets us see the challenges that are there, that are often obscured by the darkness, the things that need to be done, but that are not visible in the darkness. Scripture says people in the prophet Isaiah's day had lived in a land of deep darkness. They were, after all, in exile. Nothing was familiar. So it was dark all the time. They were slaves in a strange land. And Isaiah was able to speak to them in their travail. On them, God's light is shining. And there is hope. Light vision, strength, direction. All those are caught up in the first few verses in the gospel for today. God promises to show us the way, to light the path, to enable us. We're called to open our eyes, to see, to follow, to see, to act. There's a hymn in both hymnals, red and blue, that says Jesus calls us o'er the tumult of our life's wild, breathless sea. Day by day, his clear voice sounding, saying, Christian, follow me. And another hymn takes up the theme of light, 
Christ is the world's true light, its captain of salvation. And we can respond in the words of another hymn, which says simply, I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Though none go with me, still, I will follow. Will you this day make a decision anew to follow Jesus? The world behind you, the cross before you. The gospel abruptly shifts at this point, and Jesus' plan becomes clear. Repent, turn around, look and head in a new direction. Change the way that you are doing things, for the kingdom of God has come near. It is close, very close. There's no need for a hunting expedition. Open your eyes and see. The song we read, 27, tells us the Lord God is our light and our salvation. Nothing is hidden. Nothing is secret. It's there in plain view. Well, today is neither Christmas, and you're all saying, where is he going? nor Easter. It is, if you will, a rest period in between. It is the pause that invites us to be refreshed, regrouped, redirected. It gives us an invitation to reflect on our own personal and community mission here in the quiet time what I call the halfway time. Now, we're also in the middle of what the churches call the week of prayer for Christian unity. It is the week strung between a feast day celebrating St. Peter and his acknowledgement of Jesus as the Messiah. That was last Wednesday. And the feast day celebrating the conversion to Christ of St. Paul, and that's next Wednesday. They, those apostles, are the two heroic bookends bracketing this in-between time. Peter saw the light and followed the call of God. Paul, too, understood the power of God as light which helped him to see the error of his ways and to see the world, the way forward. And you know, those two apostles didn't necessarily agree with each other, but each one, in his own way, answered the call of Jesus. Each one, in his own way, was able to minister using his talents, each chose to follow and resisted that great temptation that's always there to turn back, to find an excuse for inaction. Each chose to walk, yes, in the light of the Lord. Now we're far away enough from Christmas, or most of you are, so that the Christmas cards are done. The tree is down, maybe even out on the sidewalk, and the house is somewhat back to normal. Some say the manger scene, the stable, Joseph, Mary, the babe, the shepherds, even the wise men, to remind them of the fact that God is indeed in our midst, that he came in the person of a small, and defenseless child, that he was born in a war zone, a child of a very poor family, born into a much despised race with limited prospects. But we are also far enough in front of Easter and Lent not to be concerned about them either, unless you're one of the clergy or the musician, and then you're planning. 
but the rest of us can relax or even coast and assemble our tax forms. Oh yes, there's always something. Well, scripture this week comes with a powerful challenge. Open your eyes to the light of Christ as never before. Come together in love. Settle differences to the advantage of both or all parties. Turn around. That is, repent and follow, follow, follow Jesus. And do not be like sheep who keep their heads down, intent on finding a blade of grass. Focus only on the next nibble. Rather be vibrant and refreshed people with heads held high, eyes wide open, alert, and committed to action in Jesus' name. Psalm 27 reminds us again, the Lord is my light and thus my rescuer. There's no need for all that other stuff. God protects us ultimately. So we say, I have decided to follow Jesus. And we respond, no turning back. No turning back. The world behind me. And the world here is all the distractions that would distract us from our high calling. The cross before me. No turning back. No turning back. Though none go with me, still I will follow. No turning back. No turning back. Have you decided?